Someone's gonna win this bike race. Someone will win the bike race. Someone. Someone will not crash. Someone will not get lapped. Someone will not get a flat. Someone will not drop their chain. Someone will get the last turn right. Someone will do it. Someone will cross the line first. Labor Day weekend. The Cardinals host the Reds and the Gateway Cups in town. Get ready for four days of exciting bike racing action right in the heart of St. Louis. Our team is founded to champion and explore and celebrate the most epic bike racing events America has to offer. And then we want to help our athletes lead a more epic life you know like it's that it's it's that big and that ridiculous and that overbearing when we started the team we just saw these amazing amazing epic races that weren't getting the attention that we really had and it for us it was like discovering wine for the first time it was like holy shit there's all this history there's all these amazing places there's all these things to learn about it was this huge overwhelming complex dangerous exciting thrilling universe right and we were like it's fucking right there and all you have to do is work so hard you want to die as long as you're willing to work so hard you want to fucking die then you can participate and isn't it worth it we race bikes not to like tune out but it's like tuning in is why we do it right you want to go deep into a thing that is completely different from the rest of your world and so the team was founded on a passion a passion for passion i guess you could say but like you know doing the massive things that are worth getting fired up for right that starts with American crits and the renaissance of American criterion racing. Thank God, thank you, finally. Finally that the country got over being embarrassed about crits. Finally they realized that it was, crits are to bike racing what hip hop is to the symphony, without a doubt. It is just the newest, loudest, dopest part of music, right? And so crits just get to the part where you start hooting and hollering and jumping around and smashing shit, right? It's punk rock, it's like, yeah, over here in European racing, it's a symphony and you play the strings with a violin bow, right? But in America, we made that into a guitar and then we smash it with our hands and then kick in a speaker. We just get to the part where everybody jumps up and screams, right? That's how Americans do stuff, right? And that's what we did with bike racing. And it took us for some fucking wacko reason, 20 years to get over our fucking embarrassment and realize that Jay-Z is just as important as Beethoven. And so American crits are now setting the standard in bike racing, fuck yes. Fixed gear crits, we were like, we see your track bike, only we don't need to be on a track, we're just gonna ride that around in the city streets, right? And then the, the guys that rode fixed gear in the city streets were like, that crit scene seems pretty dope, let's do those. And now they're the same thing. And now they're the same thing, thank you America. So the vision is just doing these races that are part of what like makes American cycling special. Those kind of races that, um, yeah, that make this this more than just you know a hobby sport and and riding around the parking lot with your friends on a on a Sunday. It's fast. It, it's literally everything about American crits that people hear about. Why people from every country come out to do these. In a crit, you are on your mental and physical limit the whole time. Everything else sh shuts out, and yeah, you're in the zone, and there's it's a it's an amazing feeling. 
you're never not doing in a crit, you know, like you're so focused, calculating, constantly refining all the time, refining, refining. The whole time I'm thinking, you know, what's going to happen? What's next? Uh, what can I do? Where are my teammates? Where are the other teams? When's the pre-map coming? What's the turn? I got to watch out for that pothole. Stuff that's going in my head and all this information that makes it immensely exhausting every time. And you look up and you see 80 laps to go, 70 laps to go, and it's just mentally it's just excruciating and so your body's trying to like protect you and preserve you and focus you you know and so it's firing literally it's firing all of these nerves off in your head that are connected to different emotional stuff that's set up for fight or flight right it's set up to protect you from lions and where you apply, it doesn't know it doesn't know that a crit isn't fighting an ape it doesn't know that no idea so yeah when it lights up the attack mode it like sends up all these other signals that light up other parts of your brain. So you feel all sorts of shit in a race, all sorts of shit. I kind of go back to the story. I suffered from pretty bad depression when like the entire world was gray and there was no up, there was no down. Everything was just kind of in this bandwidth. And then I found this sport that, man, you hit everything where you're like, you're feeling on top of the world. You're feeling like rock bottom, like, you know, questioning every decision you've ever made in your life to get you here. I don't want to finish this race. I don't want to ride bikes anymore. I don't really think I want to do anything. Um, I should just crash head on into the set of barriers and be done for now. And the next thing you know, you kind of find this extra wind or, or the kind of doors of the race open up and there's this opportunity you can walk through. So you just go through this whole kind of like emotional, you, you hit them all. At some point in a race, you hit them all. And I think if you don't, maybe you're not racing hard enough. I feel those things and a lot of guys that those feels this thing is that over time you start to get better and better at understanding the complexity and richness of your emotions and what goes on in that and you get that. The bigger problem is what happens when you show up and don't feel anything. Thank God I feel a whole bunch of stuff. Thank God. Thank God you have all that stuff. Like that you feel all that ways, you know, highs and lows, right? I don't know, man. Like those last, like the last, like inside 10 laps, like the last 15 minutes of a big time crit are like, they're like transcendental. You just like have to be so on and there's so many things and it's so dangerous. And you're trying to like, it just draws out. You just have to be so ready for it. Uh, the last like five or eight laps of a race is just, um, it's just something else. There's like a miracle that happens around finish lines, you know, like everything else in the world just kind of like goes away. Like, you, I can't tell you if there were even spectators there anymore. Like, a marching band could kind of be right there on the outside, and you have no idea because you're so focused. The intensity is so high. And that's what a finish line does. It, like, fucking takes your soul, dips it in, like, the water bucket of life, and then it just goes, Rip! That's what makes those experiences super fucking crazy, right? Is you just don't get emotional deadlines like that too often. And all the guys up front, all 20 of them, are, like, have that going on you know the you know like they're just like it's all happening it's just that some are better of like dealing or not you know i had some pretty bad crashes um but once you're in the race you don't think about it, it doesn't really cross your mind because you're actually thinking about other things like am i in the right position um am i pedaling enough it's like leading up to the race you're constantly thinking about it and then once the race starts it just disappears from your mind it's part of the game it's part of the sport and uh you you know that risk when you sign up for the bike race so if you're not ready to crash then yeah it's like you're just like no no no, no. we're talking about winning like it doesn't matter someone's going to win this bike race someone will win the bike race someone someone will figure it out someone will not crash Someone will not get lapped. Someone will not get a flat. Someone will not drop their chain. Someone will get the last turn right. Someone's radio will work. Someone will do it. Someone will cross the line first.
and the beat is Ty Magnus sitting third wheel. The gap had come down to 20, but I think it's gone back up. To tell you the truth, it's going to be a little bit more than 20 seconds here as we're looking at 10 laps to go. It's going to be touch and go all the way to the finish. thing that's gone as planned is how much shit we knew would happen that is completely unplanned. You know, you just go to Europe with like a backpack and a passport and you're like, I know it's all going to be fucked, right? And that's basically what we did is we jumped into outer space. I was kind of looking for a way to like structure our year and then we just agreed and said, why don't we just do USA Crits, right? Like, why don't we focus on that and do that thing? We didn't even have the full roster. We were mostly, we were entirely East Coast based. Like we had a whole bunch of shit that we were not ready for. All of a sudden we're racing on all the coasts across it. Every two weeks we're flying places. We don't have the equipment deals for that. We don't have plane tickets. We didn't have shit. So we, we didn't have all of the type of horsepower that we needed to compete at a national level when we started, right? It takes a full year just to get around how fast the front, the front of these bike races are at what goes on at a P1 level. It is the difference between driving on the highway at rush hour and like literally NASCAR. It's like, yeah, 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 you know how to operate a car and you can go 200 miles an hour, but have you raced at 200 miles an hour? We were like, let's finish ninth. Like, let's just not finish dead last for the year. It's gonna be similar to yesterday, so save all the mental energy for the chaos that is gonna ensue in the last 10 laps. So, just trying to stay relaxed. <laughs> and the thing I hoped for, but didn't expect, was how passionate and driven our riders would be. Like, it's, it's, it's fucking amazing, man. It's like, it's fucking amazing to see like people grow up like right in front of you and how much they care for each other, how much they want to succeed, right? And how much this matters to them in their lives, you know? Because it is all those things we just talked about. It's this amazing moments that you get to experience and how much you put into them, right? Everyone's out here for the right reasons and kind of pursuing the same goals. Um, and you experience these things together. And I think that kind of creates a, a, different, a different sort of bond. I'm looking for guys that have a passion for the sport, that want to grow, that bring a level performance to it, but they also need to go up a level. I need them to want to go up a level. That's the key. Even if they're good, even if they're already good and winning, they have to want to go one level higher because that's got to be the attitude of the team is, is what's next. You know, that's got to be. The team is on this trajectory and I need humans in that trajectory. Like, it's not cool if we have like an endless cycle of okayness. You know what I mean? Like, I want to go win. I want to go kill things. I want to go fucking smash it. Like, I want to do well, right? And I want guys that want to do that. And I want to be in an environment where people are trying to be their best. And like, it's, I, you know what I mean? Like, I just, that's just the way we got to live. For us to succeed at this level, it, it is ambitious, you know. Um, for every one of these races, there are uh, at least, you know, 30 guys lining up that don't work nine to five. You have a 40 hour job and then you're training to try to race against guys that either don't work and are getting paid to ride their bike and you're showing up just to get your teeth kicked in sometimes. We accept that, right? And pressure is a privilege. It's a privilege. Not everybody gets to have that kind of pressure, you know? And so like, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that I'm gonna feel nervous. It's our first year doing it and like everybody knows it's a volunteer army and you know it went from this thing that was like leapt you know and, and now we have a shot tomorrow for Christ's sake tomorrow <laughs> like tomorrow we have a shot at a jersey a third place overall for the team and a third place individual rider like I mean like from a bunch of college kids and day jobbers you know what I mean like that's what it is basically you know 
and it's fucking amazing. It's really fucking amazing. And that's been, un that's, that's the most unexpected thing is like what it's turned into. It's like, it's like fucking. fucking it's like crazy <laughs> you know what I mean it's like The sport is a chance to experience like the most concentrated essences of life. It's like just the best parts, right? The parts when you have to be on the most, when you have to be at your best, when you have to overcome the most ridiculous things. But you get such a fucking short window to do this. It's so fucking short, you know? Just a tiny percent of your life where, where you can actually do it. Why were they riding the inside and then opening back up and then... That's exactly why. That's I exactly fucking why. hated yeah, that. Yeah, you're just not, you're just getting used to that now. I was like, why yeah, the fuck? Yeah, that's a no, but you know but that's, that's Yeah, that's so I drive it up, I just hit the wind, drive it up and slot yeah, back in. Uh, if we had these lines, you should expect it. Everybody's gonna swing you to the curb to thin it out and then chop the fuck out of it so you don't come inside. Standard. If, I, if we had two extra guys to burn, we'd do the same goddamn thing. You have to agree. Rule number one, rule number one, you make a contract with abnormal. That's number one. It's so, it's the, it's so bad that it melted the skin. Nothing normal about your life. You are not doing this for normal. You have to fucking take all of normal and throw it away. You're gonna start a company, you're gonna start a business, you wanna be a world-class mathematician, you wanna cure cancer, you wanna be, you wanna work for doctors for out, uh, without borders and like literally save like refugees' lives. You've like given up on normal. That's not what you're fucking doing. Yeah, you're not gonna be there for your kid's birthday. Nope, that's not what you're here to do. You know what I mean? That's not what you're here to do. That's not, that's not what you chose. You know, you chose a different thing. Look at the little bump too. <laughs> it hurts, but it's not broken. Uh, there's definitely like a bruise there. I like, I was over it. My wheel was like off the tire. And I was like, I'm not getting back in. F this. And then, was, and then I got it all fixed. The guy like fixed it. And I was like, I'm gonna fucking crush it. <laughs> And then it got really crazy at the end. How'd you finish? 23rd? Pretty happy about it. Fighting for that top 10 again, which I'm really happy about.
I'm a big fan of obsession. I'm a massive fan of obsession. I hate the fucking word balance. I want the most unfucking balanced life humanly fucking possible. What's fucking balance? It's a little vanilla, a little cinnamon, just the right little bit of pepper. It's like the, the fucking bath water was just room temperature, perfectly balanced. Like, fuck off. What a shit life. You know, what a fucking shit fucking life. What we want is at least to have all of those highs. And the sacrifice and trade is we're willing to have all those lows. If someone just says, you're gonna feel like suicide this often, but at the same time, I promise you, you will feel at this thing. You know, you'll feel, you'll feel experiences and bonds and connections and emotions way over here that are equally as high and super rare, you know? But all you gotta do is be willing to do that. The guys on this team, the guys on this team, and, and most of the guys in this sport, when you see them out there racing, they've all agreed they've signed that contract. You know, I always joke that I wish, I really wish that I could wake up on a Saturday and just wanna like sit on a couch and, you know, start drinking at 11 and watch football. But instead I'm like suffering with my best friends up a climb somewhere, you know, and we joke about it. I don't think any of us would ever wanna do the other thing. And I think there's something special about that. I knew what I was getting myself into. Well, I, uh, it's my first year. So I kind of didn't actually know what I was getting myself into. You know, this kid, Spencer Movenzeta, that's like, he's, you know, our top ranked rider. He's our best scorer, but like, he was a cat four 18 months ago. And that kid has really believed in, and grown in our program. But all of a sudden he started to race and really invest time. And he murdered himself over the winter, murdered himself over the winter to get to this next level of fitness. And he works so hard at it and he keeps showing up and he, and like grinding, right? No one, no one really knows that that kid's been in like four significant bike crashes this year. Dislocated his shoulder. He's racing on a fucking broken leg right now. Hit a pole with his fucking face. Did a lip stand at 40 miles an hour at San Rafael, right? Like, and then got back into the race on a pit bike and finished 22nd. That's the type of character of the human beings on this team, you know? Over and over and over that, you can see the grind on them, but they believe, and then a little bit of it is the accountability and pressure of like, I've gone this far, right? And the other thing is like, we all have those moments and you gotta keep believing that it's gonna get you to the next level and that it's worth the experience. But time and time again, when this team has had the option to be small, petty, bitter, and doubtful, it has chosen the other road.
Life is filled with ways to never give you a fair shot, right? So we all turn to sport for the fairest shot we got in life to be our best. Moving on now to our J.O. Gullo, best young rider. Racing for Butcher by keeping Ray Warren, the J.O. Gullo, best young rider. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, it was fast, there was everything that I created, and I didn't have it quite at the end. I tried to get there, but at least I sealed up the jersey. I thank these guys. That was pretty darn helpful all season. Are you fucking kidding? Like, for a first year team, our goal was to not, literally not finish last. You can imagine all the shit that comes from that, right? You know what I mean? But it's like, we were supposed to finish fucking last. 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 It's not the easy way. Being on this team is not the fucking easy way. It's not the easy way. There's lots of easy things you can do in life, and this isn't one of them. And racing on this team is not easy. Fuck. My fucking eyes. My fucking eyes. So... <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm proud of these guys, but also like it met, it, like it meets my expectations. Like I expect them, I expect them to be he heroes. Like and I expect them, I expect them when they put this kid on that they're better than they normally are. You know, M myself included. I, I'm not exempt. I'm no, I'm no one. Fuck. I mean, fuck me, fuck me. I'm not special. Fuck me. You know, I'm not. That's the whole point. Like I'm every day. I'm not special except when I put this kid on. I get a chance to be special, and that's that's why we do this. And so. Of course I'm proud of these guys and, and, and that we all share. Everybody everybody that raced today, all of us, we share the same bond. We've all done it a hundred times when we'd rather not.
times in life, in life, the politics fuck you over? Did some sort of backroom deal fuck you over? Does misogyny or fucking infighting or the brother-in-law or nepotism fucking rob you of a fair chance to really do your best, right? Well, that's what fucking sports is about. Fucking sports says, I'm literally going to build a wall between this reality and the outside world, right? I'm literally going to build a wall. And in here, this is amazing. Hi. And in here, at any one moment, a cat can come and sit on you. 